So today we'll be discussing the paper prompt to prompt image editing with cross attention control by folks from Google research. So what is this paper about? It is about uh, editing the images generated by text to image models. So what they claim is that editing is usually challenging for these text to image models like DALI image or whatever uh, because an innate property of editing is that it preserves most of the original image while in text based models uh, even a small modification of the text prompt often leads to a completely different outcome so what they mean is that say we want to edit this image you would want to preserve the original content like you want say if you want to change this cat to a car uh, see this bike to a car you would want to preserve the original structure you want the cat to look similar you don't want to change the cat much so you want to preserve the original image however in text to image models you are just providing this text right so it is very much possible that if you change this uh, this uh, token it might affect it very adversely like uh, or if you this is a better example so a castle next to a river might give something like this but a children's drawing of a castle next to a river might give a completely different image not this this is using prompt to prompt but it might give a completely different image because it is very sensitive to the prompt so the image generation changes a lot if the prompt is changed even a bit Whereas we want to preserve the, uh, while editing, we actually want to preserve the original image. So what this says is that current methods usually uh, achieve this by giving, uh, by using a mask. So what they'll do is, uh, say in this case, if you want to change the bicycle to a car, you will give a very, you will give a mask to this area. It will mask out this area so all this part would be removed and then it will fill this area based on the background and the prompt so that the uh, cat is preserved so like the original structure is preserved but this has a few problems this is that uh, this ignores the original structure and content within the mask region this ignored the entire thing within the mask region so the area inside the mask might contain some very useful information which you want to preserve but that would be changed in such approaches and say if you just want to do a simple texture change of this part say we want to make the cat uh, have a black fur this region is very important this mask region is very important to us and uh, zeroing it out would lose us a lot of information so these mask based approaches are also not that helpful so what they propose is an intuitive uh, prompt to prompt editing framework so in this case you just change the prompt and you get the results you don't have to use any mask or anything you just change the prompt and it it edits the image in a way which also respects the original image how do they do this we'll see that soon and this uh, enables a lot of very cool approaches uh, very cool uh, editing uh, applications so to do this they thought a bit and they thought okay how to how does the text actually affect the image what is the part which makes the text affect the image and the answer they found out is the cross attention maps so they say that uh, they find that cross attention maps which are high dimensional tensors that bind the pixels and the tokens from the text together contain rich semantic relations which critically affect the generated image how did they figure this out i don't know they probably experimented a lot but it also makes sense because that is actually the part where the text is feeded into the model and if you are confused uh it is something like this so you have this big model which takes in the latent let's consider uh a stable dif latent diffusion model so which has this latent vector and it also has this text right this is the text and this is the latent so this is the latent so this diffusion model outputs are denoised latent 
I'm not covering diffusion models in detail, but on a high level, you go from a noisy latent to a slightly less noisy latent, and you repeat this again and again to get a denoised latent. And this latent can be mapped back to a image, right? Uh, how you so currently this is unconditioned, but if you want to condition the model on text, what you would do is this is usually a transformer model, so. There is a concept of cross attention, so you will apply cross attention between these two and uh, condition using that. So in cross attention, what you do is that uh, it is better shown in this diagram. So what you do is that you have your spatial features, which are your pixel features. You map each of those to queries. So you have in attention you have query keys and values. So you take the pixels and you calculate the queries from it. Your keys come from the tokens from the text, right? And then you do a dot product. So consider every single pixel. Forget all the other pixels. So this, 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 and this for this pixel represents the dot product. Of this feature with this, 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 and this. Actually, dot, 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 dot. But let's just consider that. So each of this uh, feature represents how similar is the feature at this pixel and the feature of this token. So you get a similarity score here, and then you use the similarity score as a soft max to sum these token values together so from the tokens you also generate a value vector each of these represents the value of a particular token so if your sentence is like uh, five tokens long you'll have five of these and you'll have five attention maps each will show how much that pixel is related to that particular token and you'll normalize this and then take a weighted average of the token values to get your output feature of the token at that position of the pixel at that position so basically the at a particular pixel the output feature would be a combination of the token values weighted according to how similar the pixel features were to the token keys so that is how you condition your uh, image features with your text this is called cross attention so they realize that this is the place where the text is actually affecting the image and this is the thing which we can use to edit images well in a prompt using prompt so as i mentioned here their key idea is that we can edit images by injecting the cross attention maps during the diffusion process controlling which pixels attend to which tokens of the prompt text during the diffusion steps and actually this illustrates it much better so if you see this image and if you see each token this is the uh, average of the attention maps across all time steps so this is the average of these attention maps and as you can see uh, for this a furry bear watching a bird for the bear token the most of the attention is on the pixels which actually formed a bear and for the bird most of the attention is on the pixels which actually formed the bird and so this actually shows that okay these special uh, this cross attention maps are actually what preserve the spatial structure and what conditions the image on the text so in their approach they Focus on three ways of editing an image using a prompt. The first is to change a single token's value in the prompt, that is a dog to a cat, while fixing the cross attention maps to preserve the scene composition. The second, and this is something like this, photo of a cat riding on a bicycle, you change the bicycle to a car, you just change a single token. The second is to globally edit an image by adding new words to the prompt. So this is something like this, children drawing of a castle next to a river or a cake with jelly bean decorations. And the third is to amplify or attenuate the effect of a word in the generated image. In this one, you can see that they 
change the they decrease the effect of the word crowded to make the street less crowded which is fascinating in my opinion that this even works so we'll and all of this is done by manipulating the cross attention maps and let's see how they actually go about doing this okay so now let's see how do they actually control the cross attention so, so they say that since attention reflects the overall composition we can inject the attention maps m that were obtained from the original prompt into the generation with the modified prompt so when so they say that this allows the synthesis of an edit Im image i star that is not only manipulated according to the edited prompt p star but also preserves the structure of the input image i. So what they mean here is that if you look here, uh, you have an original prompt uh, p and a new prompt p star t, and from that original prompt you get this attention map m t, and from the new prompt you get this attention map m star t. Now you can actually use this old uh, attention map instead of the new one to control to preserve the original structure of the image so this will make more sense when I discuss the word something so this is the first type of edit they make in which they just uh, change one token so or in which they swap few tokens not one necessarily one few tokens so what they do is that they swap tokens of the original prompt with others. So if the initial prompt was a big red bicycle, they change it to a big red car. So in this case, uh, what they do is that they completely reuse the attention maps of the original prompt. So this would be the attention maps for a big red car and these were the attention maps for a big red bicycle. They'll just use the attention maps of the old, uh, older prompt. And why this works is because this attention maps. So these attention maps specify how important each word is at a pixel. And so this defines the spatial layout of things. The content will change the Content will change according to the new prompt because the token values are from the new prompt. So these token values would be from uh, the new prompt, but these attention maps would be from the original prompt. So it will respect the spatial structure of the original prompt and take the content from the uh, new prompt because the values are according to the new prompt. And because of this, they'll be able to respect the structure of the original image while adding while making it by editing it according to the new prompt. Now what this says is that if you do this naively, uh, if you change the attention maps to the old prompt, this might restrict the process a lot. And so they say that the proposed attention injection may over constrain the geometry, especially when large structural modifications such as car to bicycles are involved. So what this mean is that if you always uh, use the attention maps from the original prompt then the model is over constrained to follow the specialization of the original image and what if it actually needs to modify the special special layout a bit according to the new prompt and for that case we actually need this new special maps also and what they do is that uh, they take a part by part approach. So they say that we su suggest a softer attention in which if T is less than tau, then use the new prompt. Otherwise they use the uh, original prompt and T this actually goes in reverse. So T equals to tau is the noise and T equals to one is the image. So T less than tau actually means that. So if we start from noise and if we go to 
image and here it is tau here it is one so for this part some part we are using m star t which is the attention maps from the new prompt and here we are using the original uh, prompt the original attention maps is that right yeah so what this means is that initially we'll be respecting the spatial structure of the original prompt to allow for good flexibility but later we'll give it up to the uh, special special layout of the new prompt to make some fine changes in this case so they say that note that the composition is determined in the early steps of the diffusion process so most of this actual composition is determined here so here we want to give the original prompt because we want its on a course level we want its special layout and on a final level we might want to edit our image to the special layout of the new prompt so they say that by limiting the number of injection steps we can guide the composition of the newly generated image while allowing the necessary geometry freedom for adapting to a new prompt and this is an illustration of this and what this is that uh, the, this is the original image photo of a cat riding on a bicycle and then they're changing the word bicycle to a motorcycle a car or a pen or whatever and without in attention injection you are getting images which are very different from the original image right and without in attention injection means that you are always using the prompt or the maps from the new image and on the right extreme you are uh, doing full attention injection meaning that you are replacing the uh, prompt with the the new attention maps with the original attention maps for all the time steps so in this case there might be some over constraining happening and this is actually visible in this case when you're changing the bicycle to a car because the attention maps are being replaced from the attention maps of this image this does not actually change it to a car this whole row you can see they are not it is not able to actually follow the prompt it's not a car it's not a okay this is a motorcycle but this is not a car this is not an airplane and we actually want need to give the model slightly more flexibility so we need to uh, follow this thing where we partially in inject the attention maps in some time steps and you can see that somewhere along the line we get good results here and for airplane we i might i think which one would we call good i think this one is good enough so yeah with this partial injections uh, help in this case and like over constraining might be harmful in this case the second way is by adding a new phrase in which you add new tokens to the prompt and in this case what they do is that to preserve the common details they apply the attention injection only over the common tokens from both prompts so what they mean is that uh, if you had uh, uh, initial prompt and a new prompt and they had some common words so in this case let me get a proper example for this yeah let's take this case uh, a cake with jelly bean decorations so in this case uh, the original prompt is a cake with decorations and the new prompt is a cake with jelly bean decorations so what they do is that they you obviously don't have any uh, attention maps for these the uh, original attention maps for these but you do have original attention maps for these so you take the attention maps for the the old attention maps for the tokens which are common and the new attention maps for the tokens which are new so that for the old tokens you are preserving the layout from the original image and then just modifying uh, the image based on the new tokens so and because the value would also be the same for the old tokens right and so that part is essentially the same and you're just adding new information so in this case uh, if you see uh, you are sort of mixing the attention maps together 
because and this so here the yellow part means the common tokens these are the tokens which were common and the blue parts are the tokens which were new and when you mix and match this way you can actually like uh, respect the old image but get the modify it according to the extra tokens and this could be both the new tokens could change the image both locally and globally it sort of depends on the prompt so if you have a prompt like a car on the side of the street and then you add you add an extra token here like you change it to a sport car or an old car or a matte black car american car and convertible car whatever it changes the image locally in this case however if you add a more global descriptor if you add a car on the side of the street oh uh, sorry a car on the side of the street the flooded street sorry a car on the side of the flooded street it changes it sort of creates a flood here and if you say it is in manhattan it makes it in manhattan which is amazing at autumn at sunset so it depends on the prompt if your change is local or global and i guess that uh, so they also have to do the part by part uh, the partial injection here so they say that do they do that here or oh, should they don't do that here oh, again we may set a time stamp t to cut out to control the number of deficient steps in which injection is applied yeah same thing so that was the second case the third case is attention reweighting in which we want to strengthen or weaken the extent to which a token is affecting the resulting image so a fluffy red ball and we want to make the ball less or more fluffy and in this case we don't do much we just rescale this uh, rescale that particular token so we rescale the attention map corresponding to that particular token so if you want to improve increase the effect this particular token has we will just uh, scale this uh, attention map or scale it up or scale it down and that will increase or decrease the importance of that uh, particular token value when we are doing the normalization using this for each pixel and using that you can actually as a show in this case where is it yeah you can decrease the effect of a particular token to say make the image from more crowded to less crowded or the other way around i think they have a few more very cool examples where are they uh yeah this example so a photo of a birthday cake next to an apple if you decrease birthday it goes from a birthday cake to a normal cake if you reduce blossom the tree has less flowers on it if you increase you can also increase snowy to make it more snowy you can increase fluffy to make it more fluffy and stuff so this is pretty cool so yeah that is the third application and they have some other examples of applications so this is image stylization this is just the extension of the uh, second approach in which you add a new what is it, a new you add extra tokens to the prompt so you can add extra tokens like a relaxing photo or a dramatic photo or x in the jungle x in the desert x on mars and stuff to to change the style of the image and then they have a part on editing real images which i am going to skip because they did some inversion based approaches but then they have a follow up paper called instruct pics to pics which i will probably cover which does this in a much better way uh, so i'll skip this part and i'll probably cover it in image pics to pics this is so currently these were all we were just editing images which were already which are generated by the model itself so we were not taking any real images so i can't give it a image i can't give it my image and ask it to edit it it only edited images which are already uh, already constructed by the model but what if you want to edit my image and that is real image editing and that is solved by instruct pix to pix which is a follow up work so yeah that was most of the paper uh, it is a pretty cool paper and what are the 
uh, these are the limitations. So they say that they are not able to work that well on real images right now. Also, they say that their cross attention, the attention maps they have are of very low resolution. So because the cross attention is placed at the network's bottleneck, so the spatial maps they are dealing is at a very low resolution, and this low resolution uh, affects their ability to do precise localized editing. So it, if you have a very huge image and you are editing at a very low resolution, then you can't do very fine grained control over it. And also they recognize that their current method cannot be used to spatially move existing objects across the image and leave this for future work. So yeah, because they are preserving the attention maps, their whole thing is about preserving the original spatial layout. So they can't actually like move one object from one place to the other place because that is like changing the spatial layout and they're preserving the attention map so they can't really do that. So those are the limitations of their approach. And so this is the original uh, paper's website and you can just check out this website. It also has the school demos which you can see. So this is the fluffy example increasing and decreasing the fluffiness of the uh, doll and this is changing the tokens so a cat lion a horse a koala you can see it actually changes the background a bit as well but overall it works well you can change its hat is this a cylinder what do you call this a cylinder i don't know swimming hat floral hat straw hat so it is overall is, this, is that a straw hat though no. police hat oh yeah this works but uh, so yeah it's a pretty cool paper and yeah that's all for today thanks for watching